Amen. Not the weight. Hallelujah. Like you weigh someone to find out them weight. Amen. Or the weight of something. Praise God. But I'm speaking about the weight waiting upon the Lord. So in Christendom, from a biblical perspective, it means to fast and pray or pray and fast. Hallelujah. In order to listen for instruction, listen for direction from the Lord, waiting for his leadership, amen, his guidance, waiting for his counsel, our advice to tarry until he come true for you and make the vision clear. It meant to humble ourselves before God. And as you all know that we are in that season right now because we have declared one month of fasting and prayer. Praise God. When Jesus resurrected from the dead, he said to them, Go and wait. Go and wait. Go and tarry. Until you are endued with power from above. I use the term that when the Holy Ghost shall come upon you, you shall receive power to become a witness unto me. Amen. So as we are waiting, are in that mode, that frame of mind, we are believing, as the word of God says, he that come met to God must believe that he is, and he is a reward of them that diligently seek him. Amen. And we're not going to cast away with confidence, which have great recompense of reward. For we need of patience that after we have done the will of God, that we will receive the promise. So as we wait upon the Lord in this season, we are waiting with anticipation, with the expectation that God who delight in blessing will bless us even more than all we are blessed. Amen. Because there are levels of blessing. Amen. The Bible say his mercy they are new every morning. So every day God can add something new to your life. Amen. And most of the time, in most cases, when God is blessing you, he's blessing you for a purpose. That you might become a blessing to others. Amen. Because the more you give out, the more you will receive. Because he wants us to be a channel. That he can channel his blessing through to others. Oftentimes, say we are the doorway to the supernatural. God's supernatural power expressed through the church. Amen. So, as we wait upon the Lord, we see that Moses in time past, hallelujah, Moses wait, and in his waiting upon the Lord, he didn't eat nor drink nothing for 40 long days. And the Bible said that when he came out of the presence of the Lord, his face was all aglow. His face was radiant. It was shining. So there's something that will rub off from God unto you every time you spend quality time in his presence. Even our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We see he left or he was driven or being led into the wilderness by the Holy Ghost. And the Bible said he was in the wilderness for 40 days. Amen. And he was waiting upon the Lord. 
Amen? Because the Bible says he never eat nothing. Amen? And after him finished him fast, he was then hungry. But the word of God even go on to say something. He said he came back. And when he came back, he came back in the power of the Spirit. And his fame went far and wide. So what is it that I'm trying to say? When we wait upon the Lord, we won't come back empty-handed. We won't come back the same way that we have went in. There will always be a transformation. Praise God. Bless his holy name. So as we wait upon the Lord. This is a religious, spiritual exercise that every believer must engage in at one point or the other in their journey of faith. Hallelujah. Praise Master Jesus. Glory to God. And I believe we all heard this song before. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like an eagle. Sister Colleen. Sister Colleen. Praise God. Yes. Um, it will cut out. But if it cut out, just lag in back same time. Okay. Hallelujah. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like an eagle. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and never fear. Teach me, Lord. Teach me Lord to wait. Hallelujah. Glory to God. They that wait upon the Lord. But as we wait upon the Lord. As we wait upon the Lord. We are waiting. Fully knowing. That we will not leave empty and dead. Hallelujah. God told Abraham, the father of faith, and his wife, I'm sorry, Sarah, Sarah, amen, that he will give them a blessing, a blessing of a son, the fruit of the womb, although she was past the age of having children, but yet God promised her that indeed she will be a son. And when it was taking too long for it to come to pass, she decided that she wanted to help God. So she gave unto Abraham her unmaiden, her, her maid servant, Agar, for him to have sexual relationship with her, amen, in order to produce. A child. Hallelujah. But God have to come back and say, This is not the promise that I promise you. Amen. She bring forth a Ishmael. But God promised a Isaac. Amen. And sometimes, even in our Christian life, our walk of faith, sometimes we do the same thing. Amen. Sometimes God has said some things and we are just hasty, want to see it come to pass. But God is sufficient, efficient enough to bring his word to pass. Whatever he has said, he's able to bring it to pass. Glory to God. Bless his holy and awesome name. Bless his wonderful name. Glory to his marvelous and wonderful name. Praise King Jesus. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory. Bless his holy name. Amen, 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 amen. Hallelujah, glory to God. Bless his holy name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Daddy, we thank you once again. Daddy, we bless you once again. Daddy, we praise you for whom you are. Hallelujah. 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 Be that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like an eagle. They shall run and not be weary, they shall walk and never faint. Teach me, Lord, teach me, Lord, to wait. So sometimes, we being human, sometimes we are impatient. But God wants us to be patient. Because sometimes impatient can cause us to lose out on God best. Amen. Because we see that impatient cause King Saul to lose the kingdom. Amen. So sometimes we just have to know that God is God. And as we wait upon him, whatever him say, him will do, him will do. Because all of the promises of God in Christ Jesus is yea and amen to them that believe. And as I was saying before, God is more than capable to bring his word to pass. If him say, surely, surely I will do it, then you can rest assured that is a done deal. You may not know how we will bring it to pass. But him will bring it to pass. When we look at the story of the life of Joseph. We see Joseph have a vision. I remember a dream. And he never knew how it would be fulfilled. But he knew that way him see was real. Amen. And we see that God bring it to pass at the appointed time. Amen. So we know that him work in mysterious ways. And as we wait upon him in this season, there are things that we are not aware of. There are things that pertain to our life that he want to make us aware of. Because the Bible say, e, the spirit of truth will show us things to come. So as believers, we need foresight, our hindsight, our sight beyond sight, to see ahead of us. Amen? Because we are prophetic people. And the Bible says, when the spirit of truth shall come, he will guide us in our truth. And he will show us things to come. So as I said, when we wait upon the Lord, as we wait upon the Lord, there will be a lot of mysteries that will be unveiled and full to us. Because the Bible said the secret of the Lord is with them that fear him. He will show them his covenant. The Bible said the things that is being revealed belongs to us and our children so there are things that God will reveal there are things that God will make known as we wait upon the Lord as I said before waiting upon the Lord is about humbling yourself before the king amen denying yourself somebody once said we must decrease in order that he might increase. Unless a seed fall to the ground and die, it remains. 
alone. But if it die, it is able to produce an harvest. Amen? So as we wait upon the Lord, we are going through a process of dying to ourselves. Amen? In order for him, hallelujah, to do what he need to do in and through our life. Because there are many things, you know, that God is saying. But sometimes we're so busy. You know, sometimes we're so busy that we are not hearing. And the Bible says, he that have our ears to hear, hear what the Spirit is saying. Amen. So as we are embarking uh, in the process of waiting, we are believing for great and mighty things to be made known unto us because he said, call upon me and I will show you great and mighty things that you have not known. Hallelujah. So these are some of the promises that is embedded in the word of God. That we are believing that will come to fruition as we partake and participate in this um, spiritual exercise. Glory to God. Let us read something from the word of God. Something that we all know. We heard it so many times. Isaiah 40. And we are reading from verse 28 to 31. I think most of we maybe can quote it. Isaiah 40. 28 to 31. You see, as thou not known, as thou not heard, that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fear not. Neither is weary. There is no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faint. And to them that have no might, he increase their strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary. And the young man shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eager. They shall run and not be weary. And they shall walk and not faint. As we wait upon the Lord. As we wait upon the Lord. You know... Why do we wait upon the Lord? Because when we wait upon the Lord, sometimes we can avert disaster from striking our loved ones. When we wait upon the Lord, hallelujah, we can change the Father mind in regarding to certain issues. We see God has spoken to King Ezekiah through the prophet Isaiah. And him said, Go and tell King Ezekiah that thou shalt die and not live. Set thine house in order. And the Bible said, When King Ezekiah heard this, he turned in face, hallelujah, unto the wall and begin to cry out unto God. And God heard his voice and God sent back the same prophet this time he sent him with a good news because the first news Ezekiah heard was a bad news but this time around he sent him with a good news Amen so as we wait upon the Lord as we take time out you know the same king Ezekiah in this was Lenten, God had another 15 years to his life. But during that period of time, he had a son by the name of Manasseh. 
and that son named Manasses, he was misbehaving. Amen? And the Bible says something that him begin to be disciplined by the Lord God. Amen? Just me using my own word. Amen? And while he was being disciplined by the Lord God, he humbled himself. He went into a season of prayer and fasting. Amen? And then God turned back his captivity because he humbled himself. You see, people who are believers wait upon the Lord. And people who is not believer, non-believer, they also wait upon the Lord. And you might be wondering what am I saying? Why non-believer would wait upon the Lord? But we see it in the scripture. The Bible says God caused the sun to rise upon the good and the evil. The rain to fall upon the just and the unjust. The people of Nineveh, they were wicked people. Amen? They were wicked people. But when God make a pronunciation against them through the prophet Jonah, the Bible said even the animal was fasting. Amen? Everybody in the city, down to the animal, begin to fast. Amen? As we wait upon the Lord. So, say this, to say this, that it is a powerful thing when you can take time out. Hallelujah, take time out to lend a listening ear to what God is saying, to seek His face, knowing that God ever wants to say something to you because from you are his child then the father want to speak to his child he want to tell it great and mighty things that he have not known so as we wait upon Amen. the lord in the next three minutes i will um end my sermon praise god but I think we need to read something from the word of God. Amen. Let us go into the book of Kings. Kings. First Kings. Um, 21, 25 to 29. First Kings 21, 25 to 29. But there was none like unto Ahab, which did sell himself to work wickedness in the sight of the Lord, whom Jezreel, uh, Jezebel, his wife, stole up. And he did very abominable in following idols according to all things as did the Amorites, whom the Lord cast out before the children of Israel. And it came to pass when Ahab heard those words that he rent his clothes and put sackcloth on upon his flesh and fasted and lay in sackcloth and we went softly. And the word of the Lord came to Elijah the Tishbite, saying, Seest thou, O Ahab humbled himself before me, because he hath humbled himself before me, I will not bring the evil in his day, but in his son's day will I bring this evil upon his house. As we wait to and the Lord. 
As we wait upon the Lord, child of God, saint of the most high. You know, we have a scripture where we always quote. Especially when we do a prayer and we intercession. Taken from the book of Chronicles. And it was saying, if my people who are called by my name should humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked way, I will heal their land and forgive their sins. So basically, what I'm trying to emphasize is that is never a waste time when you spend time in the presence of the Lord. Because we are old. We are Jesus' disciple. That means we need to follow the ways of Jesus. And we see that Jesus spent the whole night in prayer according to the word of God. He spent quality time in the presence I am heavenly father, your father and my father. Amen. On many occasions, not just one occasion. Hallelujah. So, as we wait upon the Lord, we believe in for great and mighty things in this season. We are believing that as we wait upon the Lord, God will begin to make known things that we have not known. Hallelujah. As we wait upon the Lord, we believe that every stubborn problem that is plain stubborn will just take it little time and leave. Because the word of God says something, you know. The word of God says, let God arise. And his enemies be scattered. So anything that is an artier to you. Anything that is a pain to you. In most cases. Is the enemy of God. Amen. Sickness and diseases. They are enemies. Amen. Yeah. They are enemies. Because it's a wish above all things. That you might prosper as a soul. Prosper. And be in good health. So if you are not in good health, it's an enemy. Amen. And you have to view it in that light. Amen. Because you are not enjoying what the word of God say to enjoy. Amen. Because he said, I've come that you will have life and having that life, you may have it more abundantly. The devil is a liar. Praise God. Amen. So... As usual, this is an healing service and I will pray to conclude. But the Bible says, faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Amen. Amen. And you know where I'm at. I'm Thousands of miles from some of you. But yet, we believe that there is no distance in the realm of the Spirit. Because it's God who is performing the miracle. Amen. The Lord Jesus himself will be performing. Because the Bible says he was with them confirming the word with signs and wonder following. So, Father, Lord God, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, today we just want to appreciate you. Hallelujah, as we reflect back upon your resurrection, dear God, your triumph over the grave, triumph over death. In the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus, your word says, if that same spirit that raised you up from the dead dwell within our mortal body, that same spirit shall quicken us, Father, may you quicken all your children right now. 
in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, that the excellency of the power might not be of us, but of God. And let that which be of God manifest right now, manifest right now, manifest in a greater proportion in the name of Jesus. Father, we speak to the tissue, the cell, the vein, the arteries, the muscle, the organs in their body right now in the name of Jesus. You sent the word, the word heal them and deliver them from their destruction. Let the word become creative. Let the word become productive. Let the word come alive in the name of Jesus. Let it become a force to be reckoned with. Let it return and void until it accomplish the purpose wherefore it was sent. Isn't you the one who confirmed the word of your servant and performed the counsel of your messenger? Father, in the name of Jesus, let them be healed. Let them be healed in the name of Jesus in every aspect, every department, every era of their life and ministry. Father, Lord God, even in their financial life, let there be healed. Hallelujah. In their emotional life, let there be healed. In the name of Jesus, every department, Father, may you perfect that which concerning them right now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Ah, the word says, hallelujah. And that they are ministering spirits sent forth to minister on behalf of the ears of salvation. As many as you have assigned, may they be released to do so right now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Father, we thank you. Father, we bless you. Father, we praise you. We decree, declare the miraculous. We prophesy, we command the miraculous. Let there be an amplification of that operation right now, dear God, in the name name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth for today is Resurrection Sunday. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, that which need to be resurrected, let it be resurrected right now. Every good thing that have died are about to die in their life. Let it be resurrected right now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We thank you and we bless you in Jesus name. Amen. 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 Amen.